Hello, kitties. It's terrible triple feature time once again, and the last time for 2013's month of October. Uh, we've made it, guys. We've watched as many as possible. Uh, as of the Sunday before Halloween, I'm up to about 63, 64 horror movies watched all month, and it has been brutal. But it's okay, because, you know, we don't have to watch as many uh, in the subsequent months. We have to keep watching them, because if we don't, what is the point of, you know, any of this? This week, uh, I tried to figure out a way to get you the most bang for your buck for the end of the month and for Halloween. So we're going to look at uh, horror movie anthology films. These are three, three films that uh, break up into smaller films uh, within them with uh, some vague sense of a uh, framing device. And in actuality, if you count all of the miniature stories together, if you watch all three of these uh, in a row, you're actually watching 17 different short films, and all of them are awesome. Uh, so our menu this week is going to include Creepshow, uh, VHS, and Trick or Treat. Creepshow is uh, the brainchild of George Romero and Stephen King. It was made to evoke the old uh, EC Comics Tales from the Crypt Vault of Horror, of which I am no small fan. Stephen King actually wrote all of the stories for the movie, and in fact he plays a character in the mo movie. He plays uh, Jordy Verrill in the, uh, the Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill, and man does he act his pants off. Um, the framing device is a uh, child named Billy, played by, by uh, Joe King, the uh, son of Stephen and uh, writer of the excellent Lock and Key comic. Billy likes uh, the Creepshow comic. His dad, played by the always wonderful Tom Atkins, uh, doesn't and throws it out. But in the garbage, we, the viewer, get to see dr dramatizations of the stories held within the book. Uh, these include uh, Father's Day, um, The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill, uh, Something to Tide You Over, The Crate, and uh, Something with Roaches. <laughs> um, and what's really a lot of fun about this one is it has something of an all-star cast. It has a very, uh, they're not all A-listers, but they are recognizable, and you get a lot of people uh, playing uh, roles you wouldn't necessarily normally associate with them. You got a, a very young Ed Harris in uh, the first sequence, the Father's Day sequence, playing just a complete boob, and uh, it's worth checking out his little dance number uh, on the YouTube. I'll probably post it on Tumblr, but uh, it's really, he's dancing with his wife, and it's just the height of 80s horribleness. Uh, the second story, The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill, features Stephen King as Jordy Verrill. And uh, Jordy Verrill's uh, this hick that uh, finds a meteor. And uh, he did not learn the lesson of the stuff, which is don't touch something if you don't know what it is. And for the love of God, don't stick it in your goddamn mouth. And as such, he dies. <laughs> Little spoiler. Um, uh, one of my favorite parts of the film is Something to Tide You Over, which uh, has Ted Danson is sleeping with uh, Leslie Nielsen's wife, and Leslie Nielsen comes to uh, exact revenge uh, by burying him up to his, knee, his neck on the beach. It's pretty awesome, and Leslie Nielsen is really creepy in it, and I just I love him. Uh, the Great has Hal Holbrook and Adrian Barbeau, Always great horror movie people. And uh, the last one uh, has uh, E.G. Marshall as a uh, Howard Hughes sort of shut-in uh, germ-phobe who uh, just deals with too many bugs. But there's too much to talk about, so we're going to keep going. VHS is a fairly recent uh, addition to great horror movies. It's entirely done in the found footage style. Uh, the framing device is a bunch of low-life dirtbags who uh, make their own videos to sell on the internet uh, have learned that in this one creepy-ish creepy uh, house there is a VHS tape that has some undefined macguffin uh, piece of blackmail that will make them rich beyond their wildest dreams. So they break into the house, they find a dead body watching 
VHS tapes on several different uh, TVs. And in order to find this uh, miracle tape, they have to uh, watch other tapes, and these other tapes comprise the movie. And they range from uh, kind of bland to boring to horrifically disturbing. Um, the uh, Amateur Night one features a bunch of college kids trying to get a girl back to, uh, you know, film an impromptu porno movie. Uh, unfortunately, the girls they bring back are uh, either asleep or a little more than they bargained for. Uh, pro tip, if you're in a bar and a girl says, I like you, uh, and you, she doesn't say anything else, run. Do not walk away from her. Just, just no. Uh, the second story, Second Honeymoon, is probably the weakest one of the bunch. Uh, it's not very defined. It's creepy in the sense that uh, I never want to stay in a, in a hotel ever again. But uh, other than that, it's kind of forgettable. Tuesday the 17th is great because it deals with a uh, final girl trying to prove what happened after Friday the 13th. Not specifically in uh, the Jason Voorhees sense, but she has survived a slasher. Nobody believed her, so she's trying to recreate the situation so she can catch the guy. And uh, they do a lot of really neat stuff with um, the killer not being a, not being uh, photographable. It's, uh, he, he appears as sort of tracking and static errors. And uh, it's really creepy and fun. Uh... The, uh, the strange thing that happened to Emily when she was younger is the fourth story. Um, that one is sort of more of your paranormal activity sort of thing. Uh, it takes place predominantly through uh, Skype conversations with uh, this girl living in an apartment all alone that spooky things are happening in, and uh, her kind of douchey boyfriend. He didn't impress me uh, as somebody that cares about anything. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff popping in and out of the backgrounds, and uh, it really kind of unnerved me. Uh, the final film is a ten thirty one ninety eight or ninety nine, and it takes place on a Halloween night. And uh, her camera person is um, dressed up as a nanny cam with an actual camera in it. I should mention in uh, the first VHS film, they're very clever with uh, the cameras. Uh, in the first sequence, it's hidden in a kid's glasses. That's how you get it. And uh, the second one, it's straight up home movies. The third one, um, it's, uh, you know, kids on a trip. And uh, the fourth one is the Skype calls, which is an interesting way to record it. And then finally, with a 103198 or 99, I forget which. It's uh, the nanny cam inside the uh, the nanny, the uh, little teddy bear costume. And uh, that he and his buddies are going to a Halloween party. Uh, they seem to go to the wrong address and end up in a place where some, a girl is being uh, sacrificed uh, by a bunch of rednecks. Or maybe she's being exercised because she's possessed. You're going to have to find out, watch to find out. And in between, uh, whereas Creepshow, the uh, connective tissue between the stories was uh, just pages flipping in a comic. Uh, as a cartoon, it was fun, but it wasn't really that impressive. This one, they do a lot more with the connective tissue. When uh, a tape ends, you go, you're fine, we're, we're back in the house searching for the tape. And... Uh, Pay very, close, pay, pay very strict attention because people are appearing and disappearing and uh, things are happening in the background and not happening in the background and you never really know what's going on until the end where uh, these dirt bags get their just desserts. Finally, we have Trick or Treat, of which I am no small fan. I've had uh, my little Sam figure with me the entire time. He's always keeping me company because he's adorable. Uh, Trick or Treat. This is the brainchild of writer-director Michael Doherty, and this is one of those great horror movies that uh, wasn't so much released as uh, it escaped. Um, for some reason, they kept it on the shelves for a while and uh, didn't really want to figure out a good time to release it. Uh, a similar thing happened with uh, Joss Whedon and Drew McQueenie's uh, Cabin in the Woods, and look how good Cabin in the Woods was. This one takes place on a Halloween night, so this is part of why I wanted this to be the last movie we talk about uh, in October. 
And uh, it's sort of like the Pulp Fiction of horror movies in that, whereas the other two films had very uh, clearly delineated stories, the, uh, the four or five main stories in Trick or Treat are kind of happening all at the same time, and they intertwine in different ways. And uh, it's really clever and really a lot of fun, because you sort of start at the end of the night, but then you go back and find out how all the people that you're not noticing got there. It all takes place in a uh, it all takes place in a town that seems more than a little obsessed with uh, Halloween. I'm not talking like you know Nightmare Before Christmas Halloween town obsessed, but they seem to take it pretty seriously. Uh, the main stories, uh, the first one features uh, a really really fun performance by Dylan Baker as uh, Principal Wilkins. And Principal Wilkins has, uh, you know, he's probably a very strict principal, but those kids are getting out, the kids that get detention are getting off lucky, if you know what I mean. Uh, the second story is a uh, bunch of uh, preppy, pretty children doing something really terrible to uh, another uh, fellow kid that's not as... Uh, you know, on the ball as the other ones, and they get their just desserts, because uh, this movie is not afraid to do terrible things to children. In fact, the majority of the stories involve horrific things happening to children, which is kind of interesting, and uh, that may have been one of the reasons why they didn't want to release it. The third one features Anna Paquin, uh, dressed up as Little Red Riding Hood with uh, some of her uh, presumably sorority sisters, and they're all trying to find dates for the big uh, Halloween bonfire bash, and um, things uh, never what they seem in that one, and uh, I'll leave it at that so you don't get spoilers. Um, and then the last one is a uh, prosthetic nose-wearing uh, Brian Cox, uh, dealing with Sam, uh, directly. Oh, oh, Sam. Sam, you're so adorable and evil. Sam is the, uh, seemingly the enforcer of the rules of Halloween. In the trick-or-treat universe, you have to abide by the rules on October 31st. These are wear a costume, give out candy, and don't blow out jack-o'-lanterns. If you do, Sam really doesn't like it. And he'll let you know with uh, extreme prejudice. But watch them. Uh, watch it and uh, try to keep your eye on the backgrounds in every scene because there's always somebody popping up from something else, a la Pulp Fiction, where the stories don't happen in the correct order and uh, it informs other things. Uh, pay very close attention to the, uh, the couple from the very beginning. There's a uh, Buck Rogers and a uh, robot. Or maybe it's Flash Court. Uh, either way, they're played by Tamo Pickett from uh, Battlestar Galactica and Dollhouse fame and Leslie Bibb from the Iron Man movies. And you will see them throughout the entire film because it's wonderful. These three, you could watch them just one and get a pretty solid dose of uh, Halloween goodness. Or you could watch them all and end up watching films with bloody revenge, hauntings, ghosts, the undead... Uh, vampires, werewolves, monsters, uh, things from outer space, uh, people being jerks to each other, and just murder, mayhem, and spookiness all throughout. This has been a really awesome October, and I hope you've all had as much fun uh, with uh, horror movies as I have. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Have a safe and happy Halloween!